Welcome to another tech video. Today we're, we've got um, a little bit of a repair job to do. So we've got uh, an HP notebook. It's, um, what's the product number? It's a 15 inch DA010511SA. So this is a Core i3 processor 7, 7020U, so meaning it's a mobile processor. It runs at 2.3 gigahertz, it's got a three meg cache. It's only got two cores because it's an i3. And as we find out later, um, it's only got four gig of RAM. So um, we're actually gonna do a nice thing for him. We're gonna upgrade that to eight gig for him free of charge. Um, it's got a one terabyte hard disk in it. And the trouble that um, he's got is that the disc is sat at 100%. Now, in our experience, there are a few bits and pieces that you can do to try and bring that usage down. But once it, uh, once the disc starts playing up and getting up to 100%, then in our experience, the only real solution to do what you need to do is to actually get rid of it, um, replace it either with another hard disc, but our advice is to replace it with an SSD drive. And that's what we're gonna do today. So here we've got our laptop. So first thing we're going to do is to turn it over and there's a couple of things just to watch out for. So um, although you can see four screws on the back here, there are actually another couple of screws under each of the corners here and here. So the first thing that we want to do is to prise up the little plastic rests pull them back a smidge. Now you're likely to break the seal. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna scrape off the, the, the uh, plastic. We're gonna remove this all the way along. So you can see the screws, four under the back. We're gonna peel this off the back of the rubber strip. And we're gonna put that back on afterwards. Obviously a new bit of, uh, a new bit of tape. And again, on the front here, we're gonna do exactly the same. We're gonna peel this all the way off so we can get to the screws. And we're going to peel off the adhesive strip. And we're gonna replace that afterwards. So once you've done that, it's just a matter of getting the screws out. Okay, so with the screws removed, you now need your prizer tools. So we're gonna open the device up and we're gonna have a look to see where the best place is to get in with the initial prizer tool. These are tricky to get into. Let's move this up so you can see a bit better. So normally we tend to go in via one of the front corners And you want to use one that's got a thin blade. Actually, we're going to go in here. We're going to go in just above the card reader and USB slot. And once you get that front edge in on a thin one, that will allow you to get a thicker one in that you can then slide, being careful, to unclip. All the clips and you can hear them popping. There we go. And once you get them started, it's relatively straightforward to go all the way around the device. You can just hear them popping. Okay, and then at the back again is a bit tricky. Okay, all right, so that should be enough now. Of course, you do want to make sure you take all the screws out. <laughs> so we've left a screw in here. That's the reason this corner's not coming up. I 
thought I had all of them out. Just goes to show that uh, how easy it is to miss a screw. And that's why you have to be careful when you're unclipping it. That's it, done. Right, so that's the cover off. So let's have a look at the upgrade options while we're here. So we've got our sticker memory here. Let's have a look at that. Make sure that that is, it's only four gig. Right, okay. So we might have another four gig of memory that we can pop in here for him. So you want to be careful when you're taking the disc out. This is, uh, this, SATA connector is part of the main board so you just want to make sure that you don't break that when you're taking the disc out and then once you've got the disc removed just take off this front bracket so it's just two screws at the front here and then we can take our new drive which is a crucial MX500 so it's a 500 gig drive Nice. You can get a little uh, adapter plate for it, but we're not going to be using that. And then you want to have the two drives side by side to make sure that the bracket is going in the right place. So we're just going to straight swap that over. Pop your two retaining screws in. Like that. And then pop your drive back in here. making sure that that slots in fully. There we go. Let's have a look to see if we've got another four gig of memory we can give him. Okay, so if this is the same speed, this is an eight gig stick, 2666, 2666, yep. Perfect. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep his four gig and we're going to up it to eight gig free of charge for him. Uh, the reason for that is um, we want to make sure that uh, his system is going to be usable for years. And seeing as we have one lying around, We're just simply going to donate that to him. Okay, so let's get that 8 gig installed. The better solution would have had another 4 gig DDR4 and then it would have been uh, predominantly dual channel. Um, right, let's get all that out of the way. Okay, so that's the system prepared. Nothing else to do on there apart from get the cover back on. And then it's just the reverse order of what we did previously. Okay, let's open it up slightly and get it clipped back together. that bit. Now what we want to do is we've got a double sided VHB 3M tape here and we're going to run a, a strip across the back like that. So this this tape we actually use for doing uh, IMAX screen repairs rather than buying the kits that you can you can buy the kits, but um, obviously there's a, 
additional cost involved to that. Um, but we just buy a reel of this uh, VHB 3M tape, which is very, very good. Nice and strong. So you want the, there's two, these are two types basically. So you've got a thinner one and a slightly thicker one. The thicker one goes at the back, the thinner one goes at the front. So we make sure that you get those on the right way around. And then just press that down. There we go, that's that one. And then the back one as well. Get the ends in first and then just press it all the way along. There we go. And that's it. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to clone the drive and then get that back to our customer this afternoon. The whole process uh, will take for the cloning about probably a couple of hours. The reason for that is this, this hard disk is extremely slow. So, um, yeah. We'll get this back to him later. So how do we go about cloning the hard disk onto the SSD drive that we put in there? Okay, that's a good question. So we've got um, a bootable USB stick here with Macrium Reflect running on it. Um, have a look at that. It's great software. Um, as an IT professional, we've purchased it and um, we're running Macrium 8. We've created a USB bootable recovery drive and we use that we're going to boot the system off this, which is basically um, gives us the ability to then clone this hard disk and all its partitions onto the SSD drive that's already installed. If you want to know about drive cloning and image cloning, we've done some previous videos on that. So just go off and check out our YouTube channel to find those videos. And that will explain as a step by step process exactly what you need to do. So if you found that video useful, Give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Just want to say thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.